You're listening to Money Making Mothers with Carla Edwards, where we discuss the highs and lows of being a working parent, how to master the art of spinning plates, and remind ourselves that just because you became a mother does not mean your dreams no longer exist. You can have it all. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Money Making Mothers, where I'm joined by Laura, who is a finance manager. Now, not only does she work in accountancy, but she also is studying to be a quantity surveyor. On top of that, she is doing makeup every weekend with a very strong client base, and on top of that, designing a label for clothes. So... Even though she's doing all those things, she's also single-handedly bringing up two beautiful boys. So, very busy lady. So, let's get into it. I hope you all enjoy it. My name's Laura Kiley. I'm a finance manager at Teesside Rigging and Lifting. I've been doing finance for nearly 10 years now. I started when I was 17, doing my AAT as an apprenticeship and slowly worked my way up to being finance manager where I am now. Um, last year at the company that I'm working for, I started doing a little bit of QS work with our senior QS, which has led me into going to Northumbria University. I'm going into my second year now, part-time study doing my quantity surveying degree. So hopefully wanting to establish my career in that to contract work to become a QS also run it alongside my finance work. I'm a mum, single mum, have two boys, Thomas John who's six and Edward who's three. I started my makeup business which was on the side when Thomas was a baby. I've been doing it for nearly four years now. I started it as a little bit of extra income and then it just grew and grew. I didn't ever expect it to be as busy as what it is now. And I'm working more stays every minute of it. <laughs> you literally make me tired when I just <laughs> hear you in that list. And you just started doing the accountancy as well. Yeah, but... so I'm going to be doing a finance, a freelance on the side of my full-time job. So I'm not going to be taking a massive amount of clients on. It's just quite a lot of people that I work with like me to do their finance. So I'm going to be taking on not too many. Yeah. Um, just a few clients on the side doing accounts or bookkeeping anything and, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be ejtj bookkeeping <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm in the process of getting my website and that is established right now and there's another one isn't there the Elaw. yeah Elaw <laughs> is my clothing page which i started with one of my best friends um that started because i used to just draw things up I've got like a sketching pad and I just start a drawing outfit up. So I do do that as well when I get time. When did you find the time sketch? Like when would when would this well, happen? I sketch every, I sketch everything. So every sing, believe it or not, every single thing that I do is drew out or a picture somewhere. Like I've got vision boards. That's how most of it, like if I want to do something, I need to write it down or see it before I can do it. Yeah. So I've I'm got plans. Boards. So do you use the vision boards to like plan and everything? Use? Everything I use, so like the QS was on that board before I started the degree, before I knew I was going to get accepted. Because at Northumbria, it's quite limited. Because apart from Northumbria, there's only really down south where you can do it. Teesside don't offer the QS degree. So I was nervous that I wasn't going to get onto that course with it. The part time, it's limited. So that QS was on that vision board before I'd even. Yeah, I, did, I, did, got, I there. got there. Yeah. So. Obviously, you do a hell of a lot. Um, I don't understand how you have time to breathe. Never mind, we've left the two boys as well. But this is perfect because it's exactly what we want to try and get across. That just because you're a man doesn't mean you have to just you know work part time or or not work at all. So one of the first questions I want to ask is, why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? Mm -hmm. um, two reasons really. The first one is. I want to teach my two boys work ethic. I think that nothing in life is ever going to be for free. And it's not that I am, well, I am anyway, so I'm not even going to try and deny it. I am high maintenance and I want them to be. Like, I don't want them to settle for things in life. 
I want them to want the best out of everything they possibly can. So that's my main reason for them. They're watching me daily and there's no better way to teach children than show them. Yeah. Um, and the second reason is I think that I think that knowledge is a little bit of power. So the more that you can educate yourself on anything, yeah, the better you're going to become at it. Yeah. No matter what it is, it's never going to be, it's never going to be a downfall for you to know more or to learn more or want, want. I don't know as well. Like I, I think the industry that I've worked in, I've always rather been in oil and gas or construction. And I think that you always see a lot of men get into the higher positions it's not that I'd ever think that, like, this is just my opinion on it. It's a lot more easier for a man. Yeah, it's male dominated. Yes, yeah, but I just think, why should you not want to try and compete with it? So what makes you want to compete with it? Because I know that I'm capable. And I think that just because I've got two children or because it's a lot harder doesn't mean that it's not possible. So when you've done all, obviously, all the different types of businesses... Why is it just because you want to do more and keep getting better and better that you do the different types? Because obviously they're quite opposite, aren't they? Like the accountancy to the... Yeah, to it's crazy. It's it. the makeup to yeah. the sat in an office and yeah. finance. Um, it is all different, but it's it's part of me. Like So the finance is very, very, very... The reason I got into it is uh, no point denying I was uh, the best subject that I always... As growing up as a younger child was maths. So that's how the accountancy come around because but then when I was thirteen year old till being sixteen I used to work in hairdressers as a Saturday girl. I always loved to do hairs. But it was at the time, ten years ago, hair hair businesses and beauty industries weren't as big as what they are now. Now you can be self employed and make more money than it's such a booming industry, do you know what I mean? Um but the finance was money. Obviously, I knew it was going to be a career where I could, at the time, generate a, like get a lot of money and income from it. And then the beauty is something that I've always loved. So I thought, well, I don't want to give one up to do the other. Why not just do them together? Yeah. So which do you enjoy more? I can't. I couldn't possibly say. I love both of them. Like people think that finance, accountancy, quantity spent is a boring job. I could never be a chartered accountant where I'm sat daily just managing chartered accounts like I like to be in industry I like to see the industry side of things like now at the minute going on the site you're dealing with different kinds of finances constantly like battling when it's when it's like that but I don't I couldn't pick either of them I love doing both of them and do you ever find yourself not having enough time to fit all of these different careers in um, no, like at times if I'm a lot busier doing my finance, I slow the makeup down. When I when I'm a lot calmer, like when uni starts up again after September, obviously I've got to limit the makeup, so I'd probably take more wedding bookings on, and then I can make the money in the wedding bookings rather than doing a full day mm. of one after one after one. I just sort of it's all about balance. You can't. People say, how do you do so many things at the same time? But it's not because. First of all, you've got to be organised. If I wasn't organised, I'd probably have a mental breakdown. So I know what I'm doing when I'm doing it. And it's about managing your time. Like, if I know that I've got things coming up that are going to be take more money, then I work more to get that money. And that's... Yeah. So that leads on to the next question, actually. So how do you find juggling work and motherhood because obviously in between all that you've got two lads as well at home so how do you juggle the two the truth is very hard it is very hard isn't it um but it's compromise and you've got to like i'd love nothing more than to be able to afford to stay at home every day with my kids and to like do things with them where like whereas if at the minute my life how it is i'm constantly trying to run our full life into two days on a weekend that's yeah. what it consists of like i need to do something with my boys on a sunday that's our day mainly to make them feel like i'm giving them time what i'm neglecting on during the week but it's it's hard to do that but you've got to it's all about compromising and um, my life's never going to be one of these where 
on an honest level where I'm going to be able to rely on somebody else to financially support us. There's only going to be me being able to do it. And I hope that all this hard work right now, why they are young, will pay off for when they're older. So what do you think they view of it? They know. Thomas John, my old spot, is six now. And he knows that I'm constantly working. But if anything, I hope that that's teaching him that when he gets older, that he's got to do exactly the same. And do you think he... Is he... He values it. it? He, he values it. He doesn't ever feel like he, I'm not giving him enough time. Because I'm lucky. I've got a very big family support. So any time that I can't give them, they're given by my family. For the people that are out there, single mums or working mums that don't have as much family support as me, I genuinely feel for. Because yeah. I'm so, so lucky. I've got an amazing mum and an amazing gran. Like, between my family helping me in work, I'm so, so privileged. And obviously, child, I've spent a lot of money on childcare. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. Like, I've sat and worked out before I nearly been sick. <laughs> like, seriously. But it's what you've got to do, isn't it? Like, people say sometimes, oh, I'm better off not working and going on benefits. That's a complete lie. Because sometimes you're not. Like, it, that doesn't make much sense to me, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you might fall short or whatever else because of the amount of childcare that you're paying out, but... But it's not just about the financial side of it, is it? You're not doing all this just for money, you're doing well, it well Well, that's yourself, what I mean, like... The career. Thomas John, when he first went to nursery, he was nine months old. Like, he knows education from a very young age. Like, he's obviously going to be a little bit more advanced. So it's money well spent. You can't ever... Like, education's never a waste of money for me, ever. Yeah, because that goes back to you saying about knowledge Knowledge is power and obviously of course more it is. they know. It's, it's teaching them from a very young age, like, isn't they've it? Got, they've got to work They've out. got a head start, haven't they? So, in terms of man guilt, and obviously, like you said... I get a lot of it. Right, so what's the hardest part of it? The, oh, I get a lot of man guilt. Um, sometimes I just feel like... So, like, say, for instance... Um, like activities, like hobbies and stuff. Sometimes my work and life, I can't make them them hobbies. Like so, say for instance, when I looked in for Thomas for football and stuff, a lot of the football classes for Thomas's age group start at ten o'clock on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Most of my makeups already start then. Yeah. Like this is this is like pre COVID life. Like I'm saying, yeah. like like on a weekend Saturdays. Is when people Saturday mornings, if people are day drinking and I'm doing, I'm working. Then it's not convenient, so yeah. I, I do get a lot of guilt then. Or it, sometimes things happen where I think I should have noticed that was I too preoccupied doing something else, which was at work. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes on a night time, if I know I've got a lot of work to get done, I will work on a night time, and I think should I be spending more time with them? Should I be laid in bed watching a movie? Should and I, it eats me away on night times. It does. Yeah. But I've got to look at the bigger... You've got to look at the bigger picture. That guilt yeah. is for a good reason. And not denying that you're on your own. So, you know, if you had... If you had a, I can't imagine how it is because I rely on Keo massively. When I'm busy, he's giving the kids the attention. Yeah. So, I can't imagine how I... Yeah, that gets me yeah. all the time. Because um, you've got to try and be a mum and a dad. My two boys, they don't have contact with it. Their daddy's not, so he's not around. Um, so you're trying to be both parents all in one, then financially support you, and then also give time, which is, people are always going to say is a lot more important than money. And I completely get that. But to be financially secure, that that is more important than anything because I don't ever want to get into a situation where... I can't support my children. I want them to have that nice home life. I want them to be able... I want us to be able to make memories. So it, it is hard trying to find that balance, but you've just got to try your best. So with everything that's happened, obviously, from being becoming a mum, how old were you when you had... I was 21 when I had Thomas. So going back through all of that, what's been the most difficult part of the journey so far? Like, what would you say is the... Most defining time for you. What of that full six years? From from being a mum. From being a mum. 
um, probably when I first had Thomas John, um, the separation anxiety at the beginning, that was definitely, I could, when the, obviously your first child, it's the hardest. I don't care what anyone says because you, you're trying to find a balance of guilt, like that the guilt gets the better of you because the blues, you've got the blues, you, it's not all new to you. You don't know what you're doing for the best. You don't know whether to cut down the money and not work as much or work more and have more. That was definitely the most trickiest part for me. Um, it's the guilt, isn't it? So is that you mean when you went back to work? Yeah, when I went back to work and I went back early because when he had Thomas John, my maternity cover walked out when he was five months old. And at the, minute, at the time we were involved with big contracts. So it was, it, I had already trained her up to do my job. It was impossible to bring somebody in where she'd left. So I had to go back when Thomas was five months. Um, it, bearing in mind, it was only I made an agreement with the company that I worked for, which was really good at the time, that they were going to give me cut down hours, but still my pay. Mm. But then when I went back, the company after so many months went into liquidation, so oh, it wasn't fine. It wasn't possible to find that money for to, to do agreement. that. So I had to go back full time straight away. That was when he was nine months, and that was. That was mad I was again, like he was an animal old baby and it was it was hard. So when you've done obviously at the moment with you doing the uni and the work and the the makeup, how how does that compare to when you first started out? Like is that a massive transition? The thing is is when I first started out six years ago, in all truthful honesty, I was still with their dad. So you would think that my life was a lot better then, but it wasn't. So my life now, with a lot more going on in it, is a lot better than what it was six years ago with one baby, a partner, and not as busy lifestyle. Yeah. Because now I'm happy, no matter what. I'm, I'm so grateful for my two children. So I'm in a really good place. There's times when I feel like so tired, I feel like I can't do it, but I do do it for them too. And I'm, I'm in a much better mind frame now, six years down the line, being on my own than what I was when I was in a very unhappy relationship six years ago. So I get a lot more done now. So six years ago, when Thomas was born, I had one job. It wasn't as in-depth as my business is now and my career now with uni. Then my I'm a manager now, so I've got a team of two more underneath me. It's a lot more organised now because... From me being very unhappy six years ago to being organised and happy in myself now, everything's a lot more balanced. My kids are even so much more happier. Do you think the kids pick up on your the, the mind frame you're in now compared to before? Oh, a million percent. One million percent they do. Like, no matter what, like, just say, for example, last week Edward had spilled something all over the carpet. Now, my house has got to be clean all the time because... If not, then I can't I can't function properly because I've got think everything's got to be in place so then I can sail ahead. And Thomas John was I was like, Oh my god, it's all over the carpet. And Thomas is six and he stood up and he was like, Oh mammy, don't worry, you'll sort it, you always do. Like for a six year old for a six years old, sorry, to be able to know that they can rely on their mum to sort something. I know that it's daft as it sounds, a spill on the carpet. He knows already that I've got it, got it. Yeah. That I've got control. Like when I don't have it. Because I mean, not everyone is in, in full control all the time. I was gonna say like you've got bloody hell, I don't know how many plates you're spinning. You must at some point, like you must have bad plates. Oh massively. People just don't see that. It's you can it's so like easy to hide, isn't it? It's on night times when you feel like, God, I can't do this no more. Like, I just can't do it. Like, I need to give up. But then the next morning you wake up and then you go even better than what you did the day before. Like, you've got to have them days. So how, you said earlier about your vision boards and things that help. How do you keep your mind set and your mind frame clear? When I feel like I'm having a bad day, that's when I start to... I need that bad day then to restart again. Um. I know, like, obviously my boys as well, they're staying with my mum sometimes, or, like, you recharge. You need to still have that social life. I sometimes need that one night out every three months or 
that girl's weekend away. Like, that's how I get re-motivated, like, to start fresh again the next week. To put everything in perspective. Yeah. And do you do anything else in terms of, like, time for you? I can always say that you go out once a month, but, like, do you do any, like, meditating, like, your vision boards, like, positivity, what? Yeah, it's to, I, I read books, like, motivational books. Like, it's the first one, the books. first one for me was The Secret. I love The Secret. Like, it was a massive change in my life. Like, people will find that cringy oh, or they don't understand, but that book probably changed my life. Yeah, like, it so. really did. did. I didn't like, read it, like, I did you watch it? Not did, you, oh, did you listen? I got the audio book, that's yeah. how I first done it. And the first time, I couldn't really take it in. And then I went back to it again. I thought, right, I need to give it another go. Um, the secret changed my life. It really did. I think I listened to it three times yeah. before I was like, I understand. Yeah, like gratitude and everything. Yeah. It's like, you don't, like, so this is, people will laugh at this, but my mum, my family know I do it every morning. Every morning, I'm a Catholic. I believe in God. I'm not perfect at all. But, Every morning I wake up and close my eyes and think of things, three things that I'm grateful for. That's how I start my day. I wake up, I close my eyes. Like, for example, I'll be like, I'm grateful that I've got two amazing children, an amazing family. I'm grateful for my job. A lot of people don't have a job. Like, I'm, although you mourn about it, I'm in work. So what can I, do you know, like, yeah. some people are out of work. I wake, that's what I do every morning. Every morning without fail, I wake up and think of think, three things in that day, well, I'm think the worst ways to start your morning off. Yeah, because it's positive, then, isn't it? Like people say, oh, why, "Why are you so positive like this?" Because I've got so much to be grateful for. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't. Sometimes I can't find the time to be sad when I've got two amazing, healthy children that I love more than anything in the world. Yeah, and that's why you're doing everything you're doing anyway, isn't it? It's it's, it's for yeah, it's for the kids anyway. But the Positivity thing, I'm a massive on everyone. Oh, yeah. Things to me as well, but the secret, everyone needs to listen, read, watch the secret. Yeah, they do. They definitely do. But that first time, it might be hard, but go back, yeah. like try it in. So, if your children could learn anything from you, what would it be? Um, the first thing would be to love people, be kind. We've got two rules in our house. You ask, If you went and asked my son now, Thomas John, he'd tell you them without me being there. The first one is be patient. I always teach them that. I've taught them that from being babies. Edward knows now he's three. Be patient and be kind. I always... If you went up to my older son and said, Thomas, what's your two house rules? He'll tell them then without me even being there. I think you've got to be patient in life. Nothing's going to come quick. And always be kind to people, no matter what. But then I always tell them, don't step back. Put yourself forward, you know. But if I could teach my kids anything, it would be be kind to people, always love people, even when they don't deserve it, and always want more. Why? Because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have them, the being kind to people, it's just a thing that some people forget to do, isn't it? Um, I think that no matter what, where they get in their life, what position they're getting, where they end up. Never, ever forget yourself, do you know what I mean? I don't ever want them to do that. And the other things, to always want more, because why shouldn't you want more? I don't want to sell. I don't want to stop. I've got no want to, and I don't want them to. If there's something, they need to step forward. Like, it, I don't know, I think... From a young age, Carla, we, we always get taught, like, say, for instance, if there's a queue in the shop, oh, let the person go in front of you. But why, though, Carla? You step forward. There's different meanings of being kind. Don't put yourself back and let someone take something that you can have. Yeah. Like, I want them to know, like, you've got to have a balance between, between everything. And without them values in your life, I don't believe that you're going to get very far. Do you think you'd ever step back? Yeah. I did for a long period of time. It took me a long time to realise. I always step back. I always let people go in front. Now, I wouldn't do that. Because the only people I love is my two kids, no one else. Anything else I've got to do is for them. That is it. I wouldn't let no one go and take the position because I thought they were better than me. Right? Yeah. 
they give you your fire. Yeah, a million percent. But they, what would you want for them? If you could pick, what would you want for them? To be happy. To be internally happy and no matter what. Whatever they want to be, whatever they want to do, I'll always stand by them. And do you think your everything that you're doing? I think what I'm teaching coming? them will get them there. I generally do. And have you got a good relationship with them? Oh, amazing, absolutely amazing. I know that they adore me. I adore them. Yeah, it's the best kind of relationship. I want my boy used to grow up. I know they're only young still now, but I want them to know that they can be completely open with me about anything they want in their life. And I want them to know that no matter what. I'll always help them get wherever they need to be. And how old are you? 27. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you see yourself? What do you see yourself doing? Give me your aim. Give me oh, what your vision was. Yeah. Well, Dubai. I don't want my children to grow up in this country. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. That's the one reason what I'm doing what I'm doing now. Working so hard to get financial, financially secure to be able to move. Um... People say, won't you miss Middlesbrough? Won't you miss your family? We've had long talks, me and my family, about this. Um, I don't want my children growing up in this town. That's not because I think I'm better than it, but I think they are. It's a small town. There's limited opportunities. You're not really going to be able to get sky high at your career either because salaries are low compared to where they are in different places mm -hmm. the value of your work is very low here to where you're going to get in other in other countries other cities not a city it's not it's limited um yeah i think that by next year or maybe the year after we'll probably be in dubai living yeah and what do you want to be doing well i want to contract work with my quantity spin and also i don't want to lose my finance background I want to take that anywhere with me because I can. The thing is with finance and quantity surveying, they're very good to run, run alongside each other because you have got to have a little bit of finance knowledge when you're doing QS work. If you want to do it how I want to do it, I want to be on contracts. I want to, I want to cost the project. I want to work with, like, with the value of the contracts. It's, so it's, it's good. It's giving me a kickstart. Yeah, it's not a typical, it's not a typical role that most young women, women are going no, in. No, definitely not. So, what would you say to any young, young woman starting out, whether she's got children or not, or plans on having children? I just think that always want more. Always, if you, if you feel like you can't do it, try at least. Like. If you see people in your workplace that are doing things that are clearly earning a lot more money than you and you think, oh, I wish I could be doing that, try. Like, speak up, go and speak to your boss. Can I shadow them? That's how I do it. My director of my company put me through my QS story. I went and asked him for not a pay increase, not for a, like a position right now, but I said, can I get involved in it slowly? Well, yeah, if you want him, because you're going to benefit this company by doing yeah. it. So if you, if people would want to find you or see what you're doing or where where would they find you, all these different businesses? So Makeup by Laura Kiley, you'll find it on Instagram. That's where I take my bookings. That's where it gets managed. Actually, my sister takes all the bookings. She does all that side for me. Mm -hmm. Ilo is also on Instagram where you'll see bespoke, handmade bikinis dresses like anything that you want to design and put together but right now i'm not really that active with it but i am going to um finance manager i'm at tayside rigging and lifting an amazing company run by an amazing man he's my boss he's really really good um and ejtj bookkeeping i'm just establishing right now i'm getting a website made but you can find anything that you need to know on my Instagram page, Laura Kiley. Well, thank you very much. You've been incredible. I can't, I'm genuinely tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so like unbelievable. But yeah, thank you very much, Laura. You're welcome. You have been listening to the Money Making Mothers podcast with Carla Edwards. 
you have enjoyed the show, then leave a five-star review on iTunes. Make sure to tune in next time, and don't forget, you can have it all.